SFF cases have come around to these flow-through coolers and uh, last few sandwich cases I've reviewed have been pretty decent with them and this one, it's no exception. Welcome to Machines More. We are back with some more Form the T1 V2 content here today. Uh, we're gonna be taking a look at flow through GPU coolers. And although this will be applicable to any card that has some sort of flow through section, what I'm gonna be testing here is serious flow through coolers like the ones that are in your Founders Edition Ampere cards. I call it serious because the flow through section in these cards, they have their own fan and they typically occupy half of the GPU's cooler and they're vital to the card's cooling working at all. And with your some, you know, your sort of minor flow through coolers, that section isn't that uh, important. Uh, before we do that, I did have a few uh, follow-ups from the initial review. Okay, one, the power cable. In the initial review, you might have noticed that I installed it from the outside and that's what I've done here. Uh, that's certainly one option. Uh, prior to the build, I had also popped it into the back uh, from the inside and there's a pretty neat inside cut there and if you want that kind of low profile uh, integrated flush look and you've got the clearance you can definitely do that as well next thing i installed the radiator against the outside and this gives you the most clearance for your rad and your fans uh, another option is those rad plates as one of our viewers astutely pointed out you can use just the half brackets the 120 millimeter brackets on the power uh, supply slash 25 millimeter fan side and if you have the right rad and fan combo that will very well put it right against the outside of the case so you don't necessarily have to screw in uh, the rad uh, from the outside lastly the optional peak design style uh, handle kit at it was a little funny the way I put it in from the top, right? And uh, don't do that. I, I talked to the designer, yeah, it doesn't go there. There's a designated spot for it on the back of the case. There's two sets of doubled up holes. And uh, yeah, it's kind of an odd location since you'll be carrying it more like a tote bag from the back of the case vertically, but uh, that's where it's supposed to go. All right, so flow through coolers. Lower section, it's no problem. In fact, this kind of design is pretty good since a big portion of your exhaust heat leaves the case instead of lingering around to be exhausted through your radiator. But the flow through side in the sandwich style case, that, that can be a problem when the airflow is obstructed. Uh, what I'm testing with here is the 3070 FE and we've tested this card in the meshy and that'll be a good comparison here. What I'm looking for is how critical the positioning of the card is in this case and you know how much effort you wanna put into spacing it out because as you'll see, it's a little tricky to optimize it, but it can be done. So first off, when I put the test build together for the initial review, I gave basically the minimum required for the motherboard side of the case because the panel basically touches the tubing at that point. But that gives a, a lot of freedom on the GPU side. Let's take a look at how the thermals are when the card is in the innermost position. This is with an un modded riser cable right against the divider. It's uh, not surprising that it's pretty similar to the unmodded mesh lishes. Now, I would say these are not terrible and definitely usable uh, GPU thermals, but I think we can do a little bit better. For the initial test build with the XE3380, I had spaced the riser cable out about five millimeters, and you'll do that with the included standoffs on the center divider. And that'll push out the riser card a little bit and give a little bit of uh, breathing room for the flow through a cooler. Coupled with the radiator fans acting as exhaust and in close proximity to the card, it gets a little bit better. In, in fact, I'd say this is quite decent for the 1440 gaming test here. At 50% on the fans, yeah, it's a, it's a noticeable improvement. If you look from the back of the case, there's still a good gap here between the side panel and the card though, about a centimeter, so why not push it out even more? Well, it gets a little bit tricky because the case doesn't come with enough standoffs to do that, but you know, you can pick up an M3 standoff kit, then it'll be quite easy to fashion up something that is the right length to put the cooler fans right at the side panel. And uh, that is about a 15 millimeter standoff, however you wanna make that combo work. But that's where this GPU hanger bar does show a little bit of a shortcoming. It's too short. And the idea of this is uh, that if your card if it were against a divider, you're always gonna have at least two screw slots available. But when you're pushing out the riser cable a good deal, it, nothing's gonna touch it, right? So the answer to the standoff, standoff is more standoffs. Uh, well, one more anyway. And depending on the amount you space out your card by, 
you can just thread another standoff into the hanger and then thread the outside screw into the standoff and that way you have uh, screw holes that are aligned. 3D printing a bracket is possible as well and I might tinker with this a bit, although for something weight bearing like this with a single screw, I'm, I would recommend putting a threaded insert into the 3D printed part. But yeah, the standoff, uh, it's, it's the most straightforward and easy solution, although it does look a little bit uh, odd there. And uh, well, if you're after every little bit of performance, it's quite useful here. And our pretty decent thermals with the mid shift, now they're quite good for this card. Not quite as good as the larger Meshlicious when it's also spaced out, but it's still very competitive. One thing is that particular test build was with one glass side panel on the motherboard side, so there's more makeup air coming through the GPU side panel there, in addition to being a bigger case. Either of our two riser cable shifted mods though are gonna be significantly better than the stock setup, which places the flow through section of the cooler right up against the power supply. Quick check on CPU only thermals showed not a significant impact there, which is good, at least there's no harm. Uh, and uh, there appears to be a marginal improvement uh, as the card travels further out, but I really wouldn't worry about that. Either way, if you have this card or the 3080 FE, 3070 Ti FE, you know, 3060 Ti FE, any of the two slot Founders Edition cards, you're gonna want to do this uh, for a quick improvement. All you need is an extra standoff kit, which I'll leave linked down below. For the 3090 FE, uh, fortunately this won't work since it's a three slot cooler, so you'll pretty much have to put the riser cable back to its original position against the divider, unless you can sacrifice even more space on your motherboard side. But uh, hey, if any of you have tested that card, please let me know because I am curious how that card would work in this case. Up next is a visit on the air cooling side, and then pretty soon I think it's time to do our custom loop in here. So I hope you found this helpful, so please give a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. Links are down below for your reference. Thanks for watching.